It doesn't work as well as when you like lick it. Then you can really feel it. It makes a difference. Doesn't taste very good. Is this thing on? Hey you guys, so um, I, if you know me personally, you'll know that I have a uh, background in archaeology. That's what I went to um, school for. My first degree is in archaeology and prehistoric archaeology. Um, prehistoric archaeology isn't actually paleontology. Prehistory pre is before written language, so it's the study of cultures that don't yet have a, a written language. So in my case, I did Ontario prehistory which um, is the study of um, indigenous cultures here in Ontario and, um, of course, prehistorically. So um, that's up until European contact, which is up until about 600 years ago. I do find the study of beginnings and how our universe and Earth came to be fascinating. So I'm also a Christ follower. And um, to that end, I believe that the Bible is uh, God's word. It was inspired through his word and um, that it's true. Every word of it is true. And I believe that it needs to be taken literally. So if you are, have even a passing familiarity with the Bible, you know that um, Genesis, the first book in, in the Bible, talks about how God created the world in six, di six days six days and on the seventh day he rested and in that time he made everything the universe um, the earth plants trees animals and humans he made everything um, in those six days so of course that's not what I learned at university I learned a, something a lot different at university so we learned that the earth is billions of years old and um, but you know when you look at the evidence you could interpret it that way, but looking back at um, things that have already happened, looking back at the past, that's something you can't duplicate. You can't do experiments to try and figure out um, if this actually, if, if certain theories actually happened. So the best that we can do is really, I mean, we can't observe it. It's not really scientific. We can make theories about how um, the Earth came to be, how the, our universe came to be. And, um, and one of them is uh, the Big Bang Theory and evolution for, for uh, how life arose on Earth. Um, you know, there, there's the seed theory that aliens came and populated the planet. Um, but then how did, where did the aliens come from, right? So it just kind of pushes back the argument or pushes back the question. Um, but I believe that God gave us his, his word for a reason. He actually told us um, how the universe and the earth came to be and how life arose, and it, he created it. Um, and um, as much as people say, you know, uh, God didn't, um, God wrote that stuff in the Bible, sure, but he didn't intend for us to take it literally. I really believe that God intended the Bible, his word, to be understood throughout the generations, throughout the years, throughout cultures. Um, he wrote it to withstand the test of time. The word was, was meant to be understood by people who didn't have university degrees and who didn't um, learn all sorts of crazy theories that have taken hundreds of years to um, develop. When I was um, about 20 years old, um, we went on a family trip to Alberta and we actually went to the Badlands and we spent a few days in the Badlands just exploring and um, my brothers and I have no shame and we had no problem going into the um, no trespassing areas and and um, going beyond <laughs> the boundaries and uh, and looking for dinosaur bones. We collected so many dinosaur bones on that trip. We were actually, we had bags with us. We were actually tossing bones out when we would find another one. And um, the ground was just absolutely littered with bones. And of course, every time it rains, they wash out of the rocks. So the Badlands are very much, they look like the Grand Canyon. Think of the Grand Canyon. And that's pretty much what, what you see. It's just all exposed layers and rocks. Um, and all the stratigraphy, you can see it right there. And it, so every time it rains, it erodes more and more bones um, uh, wash out. But we did find a ton of stuff. So I wanted to show those to you um, today and show you what we found. Okay, so here you can see some of the bones that we um, found and that we've saved. Now this one we did not find. I'll put that to the side. Um, so if you, if you want to know how to tell whether something's bone or just a really old stick, 
um, flip it over and, and you'll see this kind of honeycomb structure that all bone has and um, hopefully you can tell what it is and the other thing is if you um, it's porous it's gonna be porous so if you touch it to your tongue which is what archaeologists do or if you're a paleontologist you lick your finger and touch it to the the bone and it'll be it'll stick to your finger for a bit it doesn't work as well as when you like lick it then you can really feel it, it makes a difference doesn't taste very good this is a long bone for sure long bones are like arms and legs think, think of arms and legs femur um, radius ulna humerus like those ones and then these ones are thinner I think they're ribs I'm not completely sure this one is thinner this looks like a, a rib as well and um, this one too this one I believe is part of some kind of scapula I'm not sure I don't know what animal it's from right so it's hard to know exactly but it does that it does kind of look like a part of a scapula where that so the muscle attachment would be here right and again you can see the the honeycomb and then this one is a phalanx of some sort right so this is a finger or toe bone one of the long bones you know in the, your your finger or toes this one over here this is my absolute favorite so this is um, uh, uh, the end like the tip of your toe kind of thing so this is a, a phalanx and it's um so it would it would have been it would have had a pointy part here and it would attach if there was a another one not attach it wouldn't attach there would be cartilage in between and a joint um, that's where a knuckle would be so um, so it would kind of articulate here and um, so this one I love because it's huge so compare in size my finger to the size of this monster um, and yeah it would have been shovel shaped so let me show you one that um, my mom actually bought okay so I've opened it up out of the package and I just um, have felt it and realized that it's a replica so I was kind of wondering because it does say um, Drumheller uh, which is in Canada and in Canada, it's actually, um, from what I understand, it's illegal to sell fossils. So um, I was kind of wondering about that. And the fact that it was $6.99. So yes, when I got it out of the package, I could tell really quickly that it's, um, it's a replica. But that's okay, because it still gives us an idea of the shape and the size. So that's a hadrosaur. And this is the one that I found. And so this would have come out shovel-shaped, kind of pointy out here so that's that's pretty that's a lot bigger in size than the hadrosaur so I mean it's fascinating to me to imagine what animal this came from came from an animal much bigger than a hadrosaur for sure um, this is probably the top of a femur something like that because of the way that it's um, kind of um, disintegrated I guess here because it is pretty this one is pretty worn and damaged but um, but you can tell like the weight is totally at the top, the head here, and uh, so it's that's a good size. This one right here, if you look at it this way, is a vertebra, um, and um, so part of the backbone. I'm not sure what animal. So the spinal cord would run down here, um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's really cool. That's huge. It's a lot bigger than humans. That's for sure. And then over here is an interesting one. So I'm not sure what this is. Like there's there's some articulating surfaces here. There's one here and one here and then up here as well. And then the bottom has been kind of been knocked off. So it could be like a coccyx. Um, I've also kind of thought maybe it's a patella, but I'm not sure about the sides. Like it wouldn't have these... Um, articulating surfaces on the sides for any kind of creature that I know anyway so anyway that's a really cool bone I would love to find out what what this one really is it's a, like in humans a coccyx would have all sorts of holes in it um, so correct me if I'm wrong if you know better let me know but um, but it's still it's a really really cool bone so you can see again the honeycomb structure there where it's broken so if you ever have the chance, just walk along some um, rocks and things that aren't 
well-traveled, and chances are you'll find dinosaur bones as well. I find it absolutely fascinating studying origins and all of that stuff and where we came from and what the Bible has to say about that. And I think one of the things, I was talking about this with um, a friend just recently, and one of the things that drives me nuts is that um, there are a lot of um, Christian kids out there who don't actually know um, about the evidence for um, the fact that God created the world in six days. And um, they, they need to know that. So I actually have a card here. I was going to show you. So there's a ton of resources online. Here's one of them. This is a website. It's creation.com. And they have a lot of resources on that website. Um, you can also look up um, Creation Ministries International. That's a Canadian one. Answers in Genesis. That's an American one. There are all sorts of resources out there to help you answer questions that your kids might have. And, of course, that you might have, too. You know, sometimes as adults we get... Um, we get used to our faith, and we don't um, tend to think about maybe the logical objections to our faith, and which is fine if that's not something that um, occupies your mind. That's that's great, um, but for our kids, our kids are hearing the complete opposite at um, school, um, and if they're not at a public school, they're hearing it on the TV shows they watch, in the video games that they play, they're hearing it from their friends, they're hearing it just from mainstream media and whatever else is going on in the world. And um, and one of the questions that they're going to come up with is, you know, if dinosaurs lived millions of years ago, then um, how could God have created the world just 6,000 years ago, less than 10,000 years ago? And so you need to have answers for that. And one of the things I say to my Sunday school kids is, you know, God created the world in six days, so when were dinosaurs created? And they have to think about it, and, you know, I've done it several times, and now I think they know the answer, right? They go, okay, well, God created um, land-dwelling creatures on day six, so that's when dinosaurs were created. And so they know that. So it's just thinking through things logically, but giving kids the skills and the, um, the evidence to be able to think about those things logically. So I guess my point is that um, it's so important to teach our kids as Christians. We need to teach them critical thinking skills. And I think that's, that's what's lacking and, and that's what's going to cause them to, um, quote unquote, lose their faith or step away from the faith. Um, is that they're going to get out into the big wide world and see that nobody else believes that the Bible is true and that God is real and that we have to answer to him one day. They need those thinking skills to be able to weed through um, all of the, the information that's going to be thrown at them through life and especially through university and college and on those like really formative years. And so um, teach them those skills. Give them those skills that they need. Even if that's not something that you need to believe, um, they'll, they need that. They need to have those skills um, to understand what, what, is, what is truth really, what kind of facts should they take at, um, as truth, and what kind of facts should they question. And do they need to question the, um, the methods for gaining those quote-unquote facts. Do they need to look at the ways the evidence has been interpreted and things like that? So um, I gave you a couple of websites earlier about specifically about creation research, but in a more um, a along the vein of apologetics and critical thinking, um, check out ChristianMomThoughts.com. She has an amazing bunch of stuff. She is just she's just laid it out so beautifully and so eloquently. She's um, uh, obviously a Christian mom that is trying to teach her kids skills. Um, for being able to interact um, with modern philosophies um, while maintain while keeping their faith intact and um, and just just she's so logical and, and thinks everything out so well and um, so so check that out I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you um, how you kind of uh, teach those skills to your kids too and uh, and how you help them um, kind of get through the minefield of secularism.